So I'm very excited to be here with um, Dr. Clapper. And if you don't know about Dr. Clapper, you should know about him. I'm actually gonna read his bio because he's such an amazing physician and has so many things that he's done over his career. So Dr. Clapper, he's a gifted clinician, internationally recognized teacher, sought after speaker on diet and health. He's practiced medicine for over 40 years. He is leading um, educator in applied plant-based nutrition and in great, uh, integrative medicine. Uh, he graduated from the University of uh, Illinois uh, College of Medicine in Chicago, served a, a medical internship at Vancouver General Hospital in British Columbia. Uh, let's see, with additional training in internal medicine, surgery, surgery anesthesiology, orthopedics at the University of British Columbia. Um, and in ab obstetrics in the University of, oh, Cal in uh, San Francisco. And he practiced acute care in med medicine in New Zealand. And um, for all of our local um, people in Santa Rosa, of course, he was on the staff for eight years at True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, a nutrition-based medical clinical clinic specializing in therapeutic fasting and health improvement through a whole food plant-based diet. I love that he teaches health comes from healthy living and um, showing that um, a whole food plant-based diet and lifestyle can improve and reverse clogged arteries, high blood pressure, obesity, um, adult onset diabetes, um, this is pretty cool. Uh, served as a advisor to NASA on uh, nutrition for long-term space colonists on the Moon and Mars. He's also a member of the Nutrition Task Force, Task Force, Task Force of the American Medical Student Association. Served as a director of nonprofit Institute of Nutrition Education and Research. And I did see those PBS programs that he was featured in, Food for Thought and Diet for New America. And of course, everybody, hopefully if you haven't seen What the Health and Cowspiracy, um, Dr. Uh, Clapper was featured there. And I'm really excited to learn more about what you're doing, Moving Medicine Forward Initiative, wherein he travels to uh, the nation's medical school and educates students on a plant-based predominant nutrition and positive lifestyle uh, changes to truly heal uh, their patients. And currently he's living in South Florida with his wife. So welcome Dr. Clapper, thank you for being here. Um, also Dr. Clapper is a solid master owner. So uh, that's exciting for um, our solid master family. But uh, what I wanted to talk about, number one, I mean, thank you for changing my life 28 years ago, because um, through your book, um, I was playing around, you know, I wanted to have kids. I didn't know if a plant-based vegan diet would support that um, pregnancy. And anyway, Dr. Neil Bernard, I mean, Dr. Neil Bernard's uh, book made a big impact, but definitely I wouldn't have gone plant-based if it wasn't for your uh, vegan ch children and pregnancy book and and simple nutrition was pretty incredible too but a lot of people you know that's the thing they they look at a plant-based diet they don't know how it can support them and I think I love I love that so much in your book when you talk about what it takes, like the basics to run the human body and if you went just it was just so simple and precise and uh, I, I hope you can share that with everybody well, uh, since we are uh, talking under the rubric of plant-based diets here, I just want to start with the reality that the biggest, most powerful animals on planet Earth, elephants and buffaloes and giraffes and elephants and gorillas, about a thousands of pounds of mammalian muscle without ever eating cheeseburgers or pepperoni pizzas. Uh, so it's clear from these big muscular mammals that clearly the nutrition is available in plant foods. Uh, uh, every buffalo will, will attest to that. Uh, so it's a matter of what's, what's in the plant foods that our body needs. And again, uh, we mentioned the gorilla here, but we, we evolved up through the simian line of, of creatures on this planet, and they've been uh, 
Earth about 30 million years, the ape family. And we've got basically the same digestive system that our gorilla and bonobo cousins have. And they're up in the trees tonight eating leaves and fruits. And they're basically what we are designed to eat as a whole fruit, uh, high fiber plant-based diet. And, uh, and if you just do that and eat enough calories every day from whole plant foods, not out of brightly colored packages and boxes, all that processed junk, but for real yeah. live whole grains, fruits, vegetables, you're going to get what you need. Uh, we can, you know, break it down into macronutrients and micronutrients. Yeah. Uh, and the, um, the macronutrients, those are the ones you need more of a, of a gram a day of. And, uh, Oh, what's a gram? A penny weighs three grams, yeah. so a third of a penny uh, weight worth of anything more than that is a macronutrient. And basically, we're talking about starches and fats for energy, and we're talking about protein. Uh, and uh, um, so, as far as uh, the starches, uh, they're lovely, clean, burning fuels. They're, they're carbohydrates, they're sugars that the plant makes and then links together in long chains called starch. And that's what the potatoes are, are about and the whole grains. Um, and uh, so that's, that's where our main energy supply comes from. Uh, it fuels our brain our, and our muscles, yeah. Oh. Indeed. Yeah. And despite all the nonsense from the keto camp, which we can talk about, the, the main fuel that our body is looking for are carbohydrates. We are sugar-burning creatures. And so have some healthy starch, whether it's sweet potatoes, white potatoes, uh, whole grains of any type. Uh, you know, have a good portion of that, about a third of your plate, I uh, should have uh, starch-based, energy-rich foods. Um, and uh, then there's protein. And protein's in, you know, you know, it's the classic question with this, where are you going to get your protein? Yeah. You know, like only meat has protein. But the truth is all plant foods have proteins, and some uh, are quite rich in it. And I'm referring basically to the legumes, uh, anything yeah. that grows in a pod, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, uh, are rich in protein. But all the whole yeah. grains, uh, really all, all fruits and vegetables have protein in it. Uh, so... Uh, I emphasize to, again, eat whole foods, but at least every other day, if not every day, have something with a leguminous feature in it, a, a yeah. lentil stew, a bean chili, a hummus sandwich, something uh, made with legumes. That'll cover your macronutrients, a good starch, and a good, good protein-rich feature there. Um, and then it's a matter of the micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals that make all our cellular reactions go. And nature uh, packaged those quite colorfully for us in these lovely green and yellow vegetables. And, and that's where the fresh live foods are so important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I say when you, you know, when you walk into a kitchen and say, well, what do I, how do I put together a lunch or a dinner? The, the memory aid I plant in people's heads are, is the 4S clothesline. And that's a clothesline with four big S's hanging on it. Uh, salad, soup, steamed veggies, and starches, and that's how to put a meal together. Yeah. So, um, so those salads are really important. Uh, like Dr. Furman says, yeah, the salad is the, the main salad dish. a day. Yeah, the salad absolutely is the at least well, once a day, being, twice even better. Go ahead. And and being a salad master, that's what we teach too. It's like you know, you got to look at that. Easy, uh, you know. You got to keep that fresh. You don't want to eat everything out of packages and boxes and dead, right. fried, processed foods here. You yeah, need the live stuff. And I love that because that's our core mission is really teach people to take control of their health and be cooking at home and be more, you know, and that's where my passion falls into it. And anyway, with all of that information, I mean, that's what, you know, now I've got my 28 year old son, I mean, 26 year old son and my 22 year old daughter and they live on a plant based diet. But I want to talk about the current situation because, you know, a lot of people with COVID-19 out there. There's a lot of concern. There's a lot of talk about um, building your immune. And I think that's, of course, where plant foods come into it. You know, a lot of people, I mean, and, and this virus is unknown to a lot of people, and there's a lot of fear. But, you know, I mean, like I had a sore throat, you know, three weeks ago. I mean, I, I eat a plant-based diet. I'm always building my immune through, you know, healthy foods and fruits and vegetables. And who knows, I, maybe I was asymptomatic and, you know, how is it affecting? So I just want to talk about, you know, the virus and what we can do to build our immune. And then I want to talk about things that are stifling our immune. Because a lot of people might be taking a vitamin C supplement, but then what are they consuming? So maybe you can share about some immune builders, a little bit about the virus and, you know, how sure. SR might not even be affected. 
Sure, um, important questions. Uh, before we get to that, I just wanted to, uh, you, you modestly jumped right over it, but just call attention to your listeners. This lovely woman raised two healthy children who are now fully grown adults, functional, healthy, bright, on a whole food, plant-based diet. Yes, you can raise a child, a human child, on a yeah. vegan diet, and they grow up just fine. Uh, it's never, doable. Never, uh, Nothing. Not, never an issue. Yeah. So they, they are such statements of, of your good parenting, but also the, the, the ability of a, of a whole food, plant-based diet to nourish the whole human body all the way through the life uh, spaces. So... Thank you for uh, her. Well, you helped me inspire, inspire that. So thank you. Indeed. Fair enough. I didn't want us to let that pass by without mentioning. Okay, uh, COVID time. What strange times uh, we're living in. They have to deal with this uh, piece by shutting down our entire society. Well, we can talk more about that. But the virus itself, uh, oh my, uh, we can talk about the virus. Uh, before we leave, I'd like to talk about where it came from. Um, yeah. But this is a very distant cousin to the common cold virus. Uh, uh, the SARS virus that went through a few years ago is a coronavirus, and uh, the, this is a, a newer uh, model of it. And um, and this is one better fend it off. You don't want it to really get a solid hold in your tissues there, and that's where keeping your immune system strong uh, comes in. And just to sharpen up the focus on the immune system, uh, what an astounding uh, organ system this is that we've been equipped with. When, because when you think about it, and not to, to creep out your, your viewers here, but our body is totally populated. We are teeming with microbes uh, in our mouths, in our intestinal tract, on our skin. Um, uh, there, the, uh, there, uh, there's viruses and bacteria and yeast essentially everywhere. Uh, and yet, um, we've got this, this remarkable set of membranes that keeps the viruses out uh, and keeps the bacteria out everywhere from our mouths uh, down to the, uh, uh, down to our, the windpipes and into our lungs. And talk about that for a minute. But just to think of how powerful this immune system is, um, the dentists and the oral surgeons, the, you know, they can, they can do oral surgery. They can, they can uh, incise the gum tissue and open it up and surely all the mouth saliva gets in there. And yet they, they close it up and boom, it heals beautifully. Uh, how did the body protect itself from the infection because they had immune system, uh, marshaled the antibodies in the white cells and defended us. Uh, down in our intestine, our colon is teeming with microbes, and yet we've got this amazing colon membrane that keeps those membranes from invading, those microbes from invading into our bloodstream. This is, it borders on magic. The more we learn about it, the more astounding this immune system is. And, and a lot of it has um, mechanisms like a fine Swiss watch that you, that you don't want to interfere with. You want to really help it uh, be really strong in, in keeping the, the bad microbes out. So what does it need to do that? Well, here we're, here's where those micronutrients come in. A lot of these, uh, the enzymes uh, the, that keep the tissues healthy, that, that kill microbes, require vitamins and minerals, uh, especially the B vitamins, and uh, I won't mention the minerals, but uh, the, the B, uh, especially B1, B2, B6, uh, niacin, vitamin D, these are all important. Um, to, to keep your membranes healthy. And that's where we come back to those colorful salads and hearty vegetable soups. Uh, nature packed those colorful vegetables with the uh, vitamins and minerals. You need to keep your immune system strong. And uh, so, again, you know, when, when Hippocrates said that classic line, let food be your medicine and medicine be thy food, uh, we all get the first part, let, you know, let food be your medicine, and uh, yes, uh, we, we get that. But the second part of that, medicine be thy food, I, I never quite, it never made sense to me. What is he talking about? I, I have a bottle of pills for dinner, what do you mean, let medicine be your food? Well, now I get it. Um, that those salads, those are medicine for your immune system. Yeah. That, that vegetable soup, that's medicine for your for your colon bacteria. The, the, it's let medicine and the fiber be. too. That's a thing. And, and, and the fiber, yeah. System. Bless the fiber. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Our prebiotic, absolutely. Most our immune is in our gut. 
Um, Absolutely. So these high fiber foods uh, supply the, the, the baseline fuel for your colon bacteria to keep your the, the important organ healthy. And the vitamins and minerals in those salads and the fresh and the lightly steamed vegetables uh, keep your lymphocytes working fine, keep your uh, antibodies up. So it's the fresh live stuff and the colorful fruits and vegetables are the best fuel uh, yeah. for your immune system. Right. No, well, and the thing that I feel is stifling because, you know, let's say we make a great um, mushroom risotto or something, but then we go ahead and we put in dairy products, which can cause so much mucus and inflammation, and we use a bunch of oil, which can stifle our immune system. So it's like, you know, we're trying to do these good things out there, adding more fruits and vegetables, adding mushrooms and berries and things, but then... On the other side, we can add certain foods that are just stifling the immune system too at the same time. So that doesn't make sense. Absolutely. And you certainly called it uh, properly there. Um, the, and I'm glad you mentioned the mushrooms and berries. Absolutely. You, know, you want to have lots of those uh, in your, your diet on a regular basis, onions, garlic, et cetera. Absolutely. Yeah. But meanwhile, if, if you think about it, you know, you wouldn't, if you have a fine race car, you wouldn't go put molasses in the gas tank. You know what, it's, it's going to gum up the works. Uh, and the same thing, when, when we want to keep this uh, amazing immune system working, the last thing it wants is these refined oils out of bottles. They have loads of sugars that, that stick to proteins all over the body. So baked goods, uh, uh, the cakes and candies and uh, soft drinks. Uh, these are really toxic for your immune system. This is the wrong time to make your immune system toxic. And it's no accident when we, uh, when we talk about the uh, people who do badly, who die from the coronavirus. You know, there's always a little tell you with pre-existing conditions. Yeah. Well, what are those pre-existing conditions? Yeah. Obesity, right. diabetes. And, and cardiovascular disease, and let, let's talk about that. If, if yeah. your blood is all full of sugar from uncontrolled diabetes, that's laying out the welcome mat for the virus, because all Wait, that sugar, yeah. it, absolutely your sugar, that sugar inhibits your, um, your immune system's ability to do what they need to do to defend you. Um, the uh, obesity is a state of inflammation. Um, the uh, uh, the fat in the abdomen pumps out these molecules called inflammatory cytokines. And so there's, there's a low-grade inflammatory fire burning in the tissues of all obese people. And that inflammation blocks your immune cells uh, from, from going after the virus. And so they, uh, the people encased in too much body fat so set themselves up uh, for attack by the virus. And if you're in congestive heart failure, you've had a heart attack, you're, uh, you're un uncontrolled high blood pressure, uh, uh, and your heart is failing, your, your lungs are all full of blood from, the, from a failing heart, uh, they're already stiff and, uh, and waterlogged, well, the virus uh, just sets up housekeeping there, rickety split, and, and that makes it worse. And all three of those common, common maladies that, that lay the welcome man out for the coronavirus are caused by our Western diet. It's the standard meat and dairy and oils and sugars that flood our tissues meal and after the meal. And the miracle part is those are reversible. And, and that's, the, that's why I'm going to the medical schools and telling the patient, they're telling the young students that these diseases go away with all food plant based. Right. I don't make them professional patients all their lives. You, you are going to be, have diabetes the rest of your life. No, you don't. It, it goes away with a, with a healthy diet. You're always going to have high blood pressure. No, you don't have to. It goes away with a whole food plant based diet. And these medical students need to know this. The patients need to know it. The doctors need to know it. And we can talk about that. That's what our Moving Medicine Forward initiative is yeah. about. But we can, we can get to that. Yeah. Uh, I'll welcome, well, uh, my, you know, I'm a, yes. big fan. I'm a big fan of fasting. I always, yes. I always try to fast like once or twice a week. Um, I realize, you know, I, I, I know right now a lot of people are really into intermittent fasting for longevity. And I just wondered, I mean, when I fast, I'm always like, okay, I want to get that state of autophagy, right? That, you know, the body can clean up itself. But I wondered if in this state, let's say I have a little cough or a sore throat, is it going to be helpful, helpful for me to do a fast? 
And if so, would it be a three-day fast or what would you recommend? Is that something that's going to help build our immune system if we're having? What a lovely perceptive question. Uh, so let me uh, take a little time and set the okay. stage for, for that. Um, I tell my fasting students and the docs learning about, it, you know, if you turn back our evolutionary clock back a million years ago, um, our ancient uh, tribal foraging ancestors on the African savanna spent, uh, spent um, all days looking for food, basically, pulling up roots and tubers and looking for edible grasses, etc. That's how we spent our times running away from leopards uh, who were looking to, to have us for dinner. Um, <clears throat> But uh, you can imagine in that setting, they are not infrequently, uh, there are four or five days would go by before you found the next berry bush with fruit on it. And, and these intermittent periods of uh, fasting were with the rule. And, and our body learned how to shift into this gear of running off of our fat stores and rather than, than the sugars that we're eating. And when the body is, is running in this gear, uh, of uh, running on stored fats, remarkable things happen. These molecules called ketones come into the body and they set off all sorts of chemical signals and reactions that make the body shift into a gear of, it conserves energy, doesn't want to waste it. And if it if it's, can't find uh, energy coming in from the outside, it looks around in its own cells and says, mm, what, what can we burn? What can we throw into the metabolic furnace? And it, it goes into the cells and it looks for scrap proteins and starches and partially oxidized sugars and and throws it into the firm metabolic furnace to burn for energy and that's the process of autophagy that you're mentioning yeah. and, and we clean ourselves out during this fasting state but also um, the immune cells the stem cells they kind of hunker down in, in a state of of protected animation, if you will, uh, while, the, while all these ketones are swirling around. And after we start eating again and the, and the stem cells come back online, they work better, they put out better antibodies, it spruces up our immune system and, uh, and wounds heal better. Um, it's a, remarkable things happen during and after a fast. And, uh, and you can see their survival benefits uh, in that back in, in our ancient ancestors if they got, got bitten by a, an animal or something that, and you don't eat for a few days, uh, that energy is used to, uh, uh, to help wounds heal and help infection right. subside. It's, it's a remarkable state. So it's good to bring that into the modern era because we're all clearing uh, these burdens of infections, etc. And so uh, if you think you're coming down with a virus, that's a great time to okay. turn to marshal those internal uh, immune forces. And uh, yes, a three-day fast, just drink water uh, yeah. for a few days uh, or, or vegetable broth. That's, if you think you're getting sick, it's a lovely thing to do. And okay. often you just breeze right through it. And uh, I have a suspicion, I don't know if anybody's doing it, but the folks who get this virus and come out okay, and most people do, I'll bet you the folks with a healthy diet, the, the folks who are eating largely plant-based diets and don't have a lot of extra weight and medical problems, they're the ones that are probably going to come through this in, in better shape. We'll, we'll see yeah. if those numbers show up afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. Well, I think also one thing I want to talk about, because I know diet is so sensitive for people. You know, it's like, it's interesting how it's embedded, like certain diet ideas or comfort foods or different, you know, we're conditioned. We do have a conditioning with our diet. When you bring it up to people, people get really sensitive, right? And so we want, my goal is always to show people how easy and healthy and delicious things are. But I think you have to look at, you know, this is affecting us globally. And one thing that I think people don't recognize is you know where certain food choices are coming from. Like right now, um, you know, eighty percent of all antibiotics are fed to the animal, to the chickens and the pigs and the cows, because there is such a susceptibility for these viruses and these diseases to pop up, like they did um, in the wet markets and the markets globally. And I and I think it's just important for people maybe that even haven't looked at a plant base that are looking at prevention for the future to go, you know, to make that connection that this is really something, it's surprising it hasn't happened already or could happen again, 
because of these industries. And I just want to talk a little bit about that because I think it's something we should be all aware of, you know? Yes, uh, I'm glad you brought the subject up. Uh, this, this was not a random event, this viral onset. Uh, it was absolutely predictable. Uh, this is an animal virus. In fact, all the, the influenza is, is a uh, ducks, uh, is yes. an animal virus from from ducks. Uh, yeah. um, the the H one N one virus, the uh, SARS virus, MERS virus. These were all animal viruses. Uh, when we uh, when we invade the animal spaces, as we do, as we push into the rainforest and we shoot monkeys uh, for for bush meat and, and eat their meat, we run into viruses we never meant. For. Uh, to uh, encounter, and that's probably where HIV came from. And here uh, in China, people uh, went into bat caves and took bats off the walls or snagged them out of the air um, because uh, having uh, bats in your stew apparently is a delicacy. But the bats are teeming with viruses. Those caves are filled with bat guano, etc. And and we can pretty much accurately extrapolate back. Uh, in last May or June, in, in the wet market in Wuhan, China, uh, somebody uh, went to the market and said, I want to have a butchered bat for dinner. And they took a bat out of the cave, cage and put it on a chopping block and, and butchered the bat for so they could, that person could put it in their soup. And when that cleaver came down and sectioned that bat's body uh, down the chest and out, well, it split open the, the bladder and the intestines, and the bat urine full of viruses flew all over. The bat feces flew all over. I'm probably into the man's face or the woman's face, yeah. and she wiped it away and, yeah. uh, and, and put it into her own membranes. And, and it rides the blood and immune system, uh, the blood and lymph system into the lungs and infects the lungs and she started, or he started coughing it out. And that was patient zero. And it, that, and it went from person to person at that point through the lungs and coughing. Uh, but it was, a, it was because we transgressed natural law, natural law. No one needs to be eating a bat for any reason. And yeah. I'm not pointing the, my, the finger of blame at our, our Chinese brothers and sisters because we're doing the same thing here in the West with these confinement operations with, with hundreds of thousands of chickens in a shed and, and these pigs and the, these dreadful... Uh, uh, concentrated animal operations and the cows, they're teeming with viruses. It's just a matter yeah. of time before a pig virus jumps out from, from, the, from, from Iowa or a, a chicken virus from, from Ohio. Uh, it, it's not a matter of those, those, those bad eating Chinese folks who are, we're, we're doing the same thing here. And, and this is all, every one of these, is a, it's, it's the animals jumping up and down and waving at us that we are not your yeah. food, especially how you are treated treating us on this industrial level here. Uh, no matter what hunting and all that stuff did uh, in the past, we've used it up. It's time to let the animals yeah. be. You know, the bats are saying to us, you, you humans, you go eat your rice and beans and greens and fruits. So you'll be fine. Leave us alone. We're not your food. We'll be fine. But, but don't go, don't go seeing us as food. We are not your food. And this is the cost of, of ignoring that. And, uh, and it's not only caused great you know, medical harm to everyone, but it's, it's reached into the gears of our economy and just right? uh, yeah. ground it to, to a halt. And uh, it will pass, but I hope we learn this lesson and we can't yeah. go right. Let's go back to uh, where we are and, and uh, c continue the animal confinement like we are. For so many reasons, we're getting the message. It's time to, for the era yeah. of animal eating to be done. We are not carnivorous apes. We need to go back to our plant-based diet like we're designed to eat and, uh, and we'll get healthy again. And that's the real yeah. message the animals are trying to give us. I hope you listen. Well, thank you for that. Well, I want to know more about what you're doing because to me, you know, a lot of people, they just don't know that most physicians maybe have like an hour or two of nutrition. They're not trained in nutrition. They go to their doctor for nutritional information. So I really love, because that's not a factor. Doctors, you know, it's pharmaceuticals and procedures, which are necessary, I realize, but that nutrition aspect is so important. So I'd love to know. Sure. More. sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's embar I'm embarrassed for my profession. We practice medicine, like what our patients are eating. It has no effect 
on these diseases. We never ask about it. You're not, you know, I mean, how, how many of you had your doctor ask about what you ate yesterday? No, nobody. Right, yeah. That's up there. And, 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 the, and the stark, uh, grotesque truth is that the majority of diseases that the patients are bringing to us is from what they are eating. And, you know, we've been treating nutrition, the patient's diet like, in the Harry Potter movies of Voldemort, you know, the name that must not be spoken. Oh, yeah. you know? Ooh, don't ask about the patient's diet. We're Americans. We can eat whatever we want. Yeah, but your, your artery's got something to say about that. Your yeah. colon's got something to say about that. Your breast tissue, your prostate, got something to say about that. And instead of, you know, don't ask about the patient's diet, I've been telling the students, yes, before you order another $1,000 scan, another $500 set of blood tests, ask the patient what they ate yesterday. And if, and if it's what they tell you is full of burgers and buffalo wings and pepperoni pizzas, that's why they're sitting in front of you, obese and diabetic yeah. and hypertensive and clogged up in flame from what they are eating. And until you get real with that, you're just going to be dispensing Band-Aids. Because if you practice medicine where you've got that obese, diabetic, hypertensive patient in front of you, and say, gee, uh, things are getting worse. Your numbers getting worse here. Let me raise your statin dosage. Let me, let me raise your metformin dosage. You come back in a couple of months. Let me see how you're doing. And you don't get real about about your diet, about the patient's diet. Then you're you're practicing incomplete medicine. I think it's bankrupt medicine because the real crime is not sharing to the patient the most powerful tool that any doctor has in their armamentarium. Because the truth is with a whole food plant-based diet, soups and salads and steamed veggies and stews and all these wonderful stir fries we have, you run that through the human body day after day for three months, six months. The, the changes are stunning. Well, the obesity starts to melt away, the yeah. arteries open up, the high blood pressure comes down, the joints stop hurting, the psoriatic skin clears up, the asthmatic lungs stop wheezing, the migraine headaches go away, the, 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 the yeah. bowels settle down. They turn into normal, healthy people right in front of your eyes, doctor. How can you not want that from your, for your patient? How can you withhold this information from them? It's unethical, yeah. it's unfair. And uh, so I said, even if you don't believe in it yourself. You at least owe the patient, uh, as they're walking out the door, two page hand, here, you want to get rid of your high blood pressure, go to these websites, read this article, and then go yeah. see the plant-based dietitian down the hall. She'll sh show you what to eat. You come back in a month, let me see if you're doing better. That's how medicine should be practiced uh, the, in, in now and in the future. So I'm going to the nation's medical schools. It's called our Moving Medicine Forward Initiative, and I'm going to, I'm trying, I want to get to all the medical schools and give those students the lecture I wish someone had given me 50 years ago. It would have changed every diagnosis I made, every treatment recommendation I made, uh, starting with a, with a healthy, whole food, plant-predominant diet. You don't have to be 100% vegan, I guess. But the majority of what goes down your gullet should have grown out of the ground and be unprocessed. If you do this, you see your patients get healthy. And, and, and I tell the students, somebody needs to tell you this. Uh, it's, it's the most important tool that you'll ever have in your armamentarium. And, and towards the end of the slide presentation, I put up some controversial slides. I, I put up a list of all these diseases, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, clogged arteries. I click the slide and the word reversible shows up. I said, these are all reversible diseases, every one of them. We, yeah. we, whoever practices lifestyle medicine, we have, a, we have dozens of patients who used to have high blood pressure, used to have diabetes. These diseases go away. One, you need to know that. And then second, I said, knowing how reversible these diseases are, especially in the face of a, of a whole food plant-based diet, I click the slide and this question comes up. You want to heal these patients or don't you? I mean, really, why don't you go into medicine? Why don't you heal these people? Um, if you do, then get real about what they're eating, because that's why they're sitting in front yeah. of your doctor. And, uh, and, and to just raise their medications and they haven't come back in a month is bankrupt medicine. And I give them lots of uh, references and, and resources. Uh, and we're going to be setting up a, uh, uh, an online uh, meeting, of course, where we'll talk about uh, nutrition-based cases every month. Uh, people will, will talk about uh, what's working at their different medical schools. And we want, I want to get this incorporated into the medical curriculum so every doctor who graduates understands the importance of their patient's diet in both 
causing these diseases and in curing these diseases. And that. so that's really the focus of our initiative. If people would like to learn more about what we're doing, yeah. go to my website, drclapper.com, and it's all spelled out, D-O-C-T-O-R-K-L-A-P-E-R.com, and click on Moving Medicine Forward, and that will take you to our webpage, and you'll see what we're doing. Um, and there's a little panel to check if you know a medical student that you would like me to connect with to come oh, to okay. their med school, uh, either in person or electronically, give us their name and number, we'll, we'll, we'll contact them. So, uh, and if people would like to help us uh, financially, that would be, a, it's, a, yeah. it's a nonprofit organization. We, we could use the support as well. It's expensive to, to do all this. But I think it's the most important work I can do uh, in my remaining years is to uh, create a nutritional awakening among my uh, young, among the young doctors. And uh, I think we owe uh, the public uh, a nutritionally awakened physician who, who knows the importance of what their patients are eating. Yeah, I think that's a really important movement. I'm glad that's happening. <laughs> it's just so important for people to have that, you know, find, find that trust that a doctor actually has a little education and that they're going to look at all over your lifestyle and what you're eating. But you know, I, I often start in my lectures, I start with the, to the public to, with an apology. I want to apologize on behalf of every doctor you ever saw who never asked you about what they're eating, about what you are eating, uh, for, the, for bringing this nutritional ignorance into the, uh, into the exam room. I, I, it's embarrassing. Yeah, and uh, the ancient physicians knew the importance of it, but we've forgotten. And I apologize on behalf of my profession. We we're, we're, we're going to change that as rapidly as we can. Well, Dr. Clapper, I really appreciate you letting me talk to you today about all of these really important um, information that it gets out there to people and that they can see, you know, there's a lot of benefit for changing our diet and just eating plants. So I appreciate Absolutely. I hope I must say, this is uh, this is not this is unsolicited. Uh, I'm not uh, intentionally putting in a plug for Salad Master. But I must admit, my wife's uh, using the, those lovely uh, pots and, uh, and saucepans, et cetera, and has been turning out the most delicious stir okay. fries and soups and casseroles. Uh, and she can make up the, the, the uh, soups that we can eat off of for three days. Uh, you know, they, uh, they keep in the fridge. Uh, it's a, the, they really are wonderful tools. And, and the food comes out tasting really good. It's unsolicited. I, 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 okay. No one paid me for this. But truth of it is, if, you're, if you want people to change their diet, the, 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 the making of it can't be a hassle because they're not going to stay yeah. with it. And the nice right. things is you, as the, the salad master line, uh, lets people make up these big batch soups and stews, yeah. etc. cetera. Faster. And, I think oh. the machine, the food processor, I mean, the goal is to inspire people to eat more fruits and vegetables. And if the process is simple, you know, people are going to eat more fruits and vegetables. So yeah, absolutely. So thank you for that. Well, thank you, Dr. Clapper. Um, I, uh, so much heartfelt love for all your work from day one. And uh, thank you for changing my life and my children's lives. And um, yeah, I hope that you and Elise can watch some of our live cooking shows on Facebook because we're doing live plant-based classes. Oh, lovely. Yes, I'll, I'll look forward to tuning in. That'd be wonderful. Okay. All right. Will do. Can okay. keep up the great work. It's so important to educate the public. Now, it's, it's, we've got enough science of it. It's about education. It's about taking our, our brothers and sisters and gently pulling them over to the side of life. And, uh, and, uh, and sustainability on our planet and the change in our diet is step one to that. So thank you for, uh, for helping that process happen. It's the most important healing we can do now. I'm glad to work with you on this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Clapper. You stay safe, you and Elise, okay? And to you too, and to all okay. your viewers. Okay. Bye-bye.